he cheated death and built a tomb, the like of which mankind has never seen. For more than 2,000 years, one of the greatest mysteries of the ancient world has remained locked beneath a quiet mound of earth in central China. To the untrained eye, the site looks like nothing more than a grassy hill, surrounded by farmland and trees. But beneath this mound lies the sealed tomb of Qin Shi Huang, the first emperor of a united China, a man whose ambitions stretched far beyond life itself. His burial chamber has never been opened. Legends warn of deadly traps, rivers of flowing mercury, and a vast underground kingdom designed to mirror the empire above. Modern technology has confirmed that some of these legends may indeed be true, yet no one has dared to penetrate its walls. Archaeologists know it is there, but fear and caution keep them away. The question lingers like a shadow. In 2025, with so much scientific progress, why do experts still refuse to uncover the tomb? What secret could possibly be so terrifying that the world continues to wait? To answer this, we must journey back more than two millennia to the rise of the emperor who dreamed of immortality. Two thousand years ago, China was a fractured land, torn apart by constant war. This was the Warring States period, one of the bloodiest eras in Chinese history. Powerful kingdoms fought endlessly for dominance, each with its own rulers, armies, currencies, and customs. Alliances shifted like sand, betrayals were common, and peace was almost non-existent. Ordinary people lived in the shadow of war, never knowing which state might conquer their land next. In the western state of Qin, a boy named Ying Zheng was born in 259 BC. Few could have imagined that this child would grow to be the man who would unite China for the first time in its history. When Ying Zheng was just 13 years old, his father, King Zhuangxiang of Qin, died suddenly. The young boy inherited the throne far too early, and as a teenager he was surrounded by ambitious ministers and generals who sought to control him. But as the years passed, Ying Jing revealed a nature far more formidable than anyone expected. He was sharp, ruthless, and determined to bring order to a chaotic land. He was not content to simply rule Qin. He envisioned something no ruler had dared attempt before, uniting all of the fractured kingdoms under one crown, one law, and one emperor. This dream of unity was not achieved through peace. It came through the sword. For nearly ten years, Ying Zheng led his armies in relentless campaigns across the land. Qin's soldiers were among the best trained in the world at the time. They marched in disciplined formations, wielding advanced weapons forged, in iron, and carried out strategies that crushed their rivals one after another. The states of Han, Zhao, Wei, Chu, Yan, and Qi fell one by one to Qin's unstoppable military machine. With each conquest, Ying Zheng's vision came closer to reality. Finally, in 221 BC, his armies triumphed over the last of his enemies and, for the first time in history, the fractured states of China stood united under a single ruler. At the age of just 38, Ying Zheng declared himself Qin Shi Huangdi, literally, first emperor of Qin. Yeah, to his people, this was the dawn of a new age. The endless wars were finally over, but to the emperor it was only the beginning of something far greater. The emperor wasted no time in reshaping his new empire. To bind the vast and diverse land together, he enforced sweeping reforms. He ordered that one standardized system of writing be used across all provinces, replacing dozens of local scripts, for the first time people across China could communicate with the same written characters, strengthening unity and administration. Qin Shi Huang also introduced a single currency, replacing the patchwork of coins and barter systems that had previously divided the states. Weights and measures were standardized so that trade could flow smoothly, taxation could be fairly applied, and disputes could be reduced. Even the width of cart axles was regulated, so every vehicle in the empire, 
could fit on the same roads. These changes, though harsh, ensured efficiency and order in a newly unified land. But the emperor's vision extended beyond administration. He embarked on massive construction projects to protect and expand his empire. He ordered the connection and strengthening of existing walls built by the former rival states, forming the foundation of what would later become known as the Great Wall of China. This colossal undertaking required the labor of hundreds of thousands of soldiers, peasants, and prisoners. The goal was clear, to protect the fertile heartlands of China from northern nomadic tribes who raided across the border. Within the empire, the emperor ordered new networks of wide roads and canals, connecting provinces that had once been divided. Armies could now be dispatched swiftly, trade could flourish, and messages could travel with unprecedented speed. Local rulers who once held power were stripped of their authority and replaced with officials loyal to the emperor, ensuring that no one could rival him. Qin Shi Huang's empire was efficient, powerful, and tightly controlled. To his subjects, he was a figure both feared and admired. But for all his power, he remained haunted by one enemy that no army could conquer, death. The emperor's obsession with immortality soon became an all-consuming fixation. He refused to accept that his reign, which had reshaped the world, might one day come to an end. Across the empire, he sent out expeditions in search of the secret to eternal life. Teams of scholars, physicians, and alchemists scoured the land. Some were sent to faraway islands said to be home to mystical beings who guarded magical herbs of longevity. Others experimented in secret laboratories, creating potions and elixirs that promised to halt aging and grant eternal youth. Among the substances Qin Shi Huang consumed most frequently was mercury, believed in ancient Chinese tradition to hold special life-giving properties. But the truth was deadly. Mercury is one of the most toxic elements known to man. Rather than preserving his life, it slowly poisoned him. Still, the emperor drank it, convinced by the advice of those who told him it was the key to living forever. The irony was cruel. In his desperation to cheat death, Qin Shi Huang may have hastened his own demise. Yet his obsession with immortality did not stop at his own body. The emperor envisioned a world where he could continue ruling even after death. From the time he was a young king, he began planning for his eternal legacy. What he ordered was no ordinary tomb. He commanded the construction of an underground kingdom, a palace beneath the earth that would rival anything above it. This was not a place to rest. It was a place to rule forever. The scale of the project was staggering. Ancient records tell us that more than 700,000 workers were conscripted to build the tomb. Soldiers, craftsmen, prisoners, and peasants dragged from every corner of the empire. For nearly four decades, they labored day and night to bring the emperor's vision to life. The work was so immense that it continued throughout Qin Shi Huang's reign and was still unfinished when he died in 210 BC. Archaeological evidence confirms the enormity of the project. Beneath the earth, engineers dug chambers, passageways, and halls on a massive scale. The emperor's burial site was not a simple grave. It was a subterranean empire complete with palaces, towers, and defenses. Legends pass down through the centuries tell of wonders and horrors buried within. Ancient texts describe rivers and seas of flowing mercury, designed to mimic the natural landscapes of China. Mechanical traps were said to guard the tomb from intruders, ready to strike even after thousands of years. The ceiling of the chamber was painted with stars and constellations, a miniature cosmos above the emperor's eternal palace. Most famously, outside the mound itself, an army of more than 8,000 life-size terracotta soldiers was buried in formation each with unique facial features, weapons, and armor. They were not simply statues. They were guardians meant to protect the emperor in the afterlife, a ghostly army prepared to march for eternity. To this day, the central tomb of Qin Shi Huang has never been opened. Scientists using modern scanning, technology have detected unusual readings in the earth, 
elevated levels of mercury around the site, hinting that the ancient accounts may be true. But to pierce the tomb itself remains too dangerous. Archaeologists fear that opening the chamber could trigger collapses, destroy priceless artifacts, or even expose deadly toxins preserved within. The technology to safely explore without irreparably damaging the site simply does not exist yet. And so the tomb remains sealed, exactly as the Emperor intended, guarded by legend, mystery, and fear. Even after more than 2,000 years, Qin Shi Huang's presence looms large. He was a man who dreamed of immortality, who sought to bend life and death to his will. His empire shaped the foundation of China, and his tomb remains one of the most tantalizing and terrifying mysteries in the world. Perhaps one day, science will find a way to unlock the secrets beneath that mound. But until then, the emperor rests undisturbed in his underground kingdom, his legacy frozen in time, his secrets intact, his dream of eternal rule almost fulfilled. And yet, the story of Qin Shi Huang's tomb does not end with what the ancient texts tell us. The mystery deepens when we look at how carefully the tomb has been avoided for centuries. Generations of rulers after him knew of its existence. Dynasties rose and fell, but none dared to open the emperor's resting place. The Han Dynasty, which followed Qin, certainly knew where the burial mound stood. Later dynasties, too, were aware of it. Yet time and again, history records that they left it untouched. Was it respect? Was it superstition? Or was it fear? If the tomb truly held deadly traps, poison-laced chambers, or rivers of mercury, perhaps even the most powerful emperors thought it was wiser to let Qin Shi Huang's spirit remain undisturbed. For archaeologists in the modern age, the dilemma is equally daunting. The terracotta army alone, just the outer defenses of the tomb, has taken decades of careful excavation. Each warrior is unique, crafted with exquisite detail. Horses, chariots, and even acrobats have been found in adjoining pits. These discoveries suggest the central chamber must be even more extraordinary. But here lies the problem. The technology to excavate without causing irreversible damage is still not ready. The paint on the terracotta warriors, for example, was once bright and vivid. The moment they were exposed to air, most of the pigments faded or flaked away. That loss was devastating to historians. Imagine if the same thing were to happen inside the emperor's tomb. Priceless treasures, untouched for 2,000 years, could crumble into dust the instant the seal is broken. Then there is the matter of the mercury. Modern surveys using soil analysis have detected abnormally high levels of mercury around the tomb mound, consistent with the old stories of rivers and seas of the toxic metal. If true, then the burial chamber may still be filled with deadly vapors. Scientists worry that entering the tomb without proper precautions could expose people to dangerous levels of mercury poisoning. Not only would that put archaeologists at risk, it might also release contaminants into the surrounding environment. In a strange way, the emperor's obsession with immortality may still be protecting him, centuries after his death. Some historians go further, speculating that there may indeed be mechanical traps hidden within. Ancient texts mention crossbows rigged to fire at anyone who tried to enter, and while it might sound like myth, the ancient Chinese were highly skilled engineers. Their crossbow mechanisms were remarkably advanced, and some archaeologists believe it is entirely possible that automated defenses were built into the tomb. After all, Qin Shu Huang spared no effort in ensuring his reign would last forever, even beyond death. If anyone could have devised such elaborate protections, it was him. The emperor's paranoia about death extended even to those who built his tomb. Records suggest that many of the workers and craftsmen who labored on the project were sealed inside after its completion. It was said they knew too much about the tomb's secrets to be allowed to live whether true or exaggerated. This belief adds another layer of grim mystery to the site. 
If the remains of thousands of workers truly lie entombed within, then opening the chamber would mean disturbing not only the emperor's eternal rest, but also that of countless others who perished in service to his obsession. So today, archaeologists face a choice that weighs heavily on science, history, and ethics. Should they wait until technology advances enough to ensure that no damage occurs, or should they risk opening the tomb, knowing they may lose irreplaceable treasures forever? For now, the consensus leans toward patience. The tomb remains untouched, a time capsule of one of the most powerful figures in history. But the debate continues, and each new generation asks the same question. How long should we wait? The fascination with Qin Shi Huang's tomb also raises a deeper question about humanity itself. Why are we so drawn to mysteries like this? Perhaps it is because the emperor's story mirrors something within us all. The fear of mortality, the desire to leave something behind, the dream of defying time. Qin Shi Huang ruled with an iron fist, but in the end he was just a man terrified of death. His tomb is a monument to that fear, built on a scale no one has dared match since, and maybe that is why the thought of opening it feels so dangerous. It is not just a matter of science. It is a confrontation with the raw human obsession to control the uncontrollable. Even now, in 2025, scientists remain cautious. Ground-penetrating radar, magnetic surveys, and drone mapping have given glimpses of what may lie within. Some readings suggest vast networks of chambers, halls, and hidden treasures still waiting in the dark. Yet every expert who studies the site comes to the same conclusion. The world is not ready to open it. We lack the means to preserve what lies inside. And, perhaps more importantly, we are still haunted by the warnings of history. The rivers of mercury, the traps, the curses whispered through time, whether real or not, they hang over the tomb like a veil of dread. So the mound stands, quiet and untouched. Farmers plow fields nearby, tourists visit the terracotta army, and life goes on around it, but deep beneath the earth, the emperor waits. His dream of immortality may have failed in the flesh, but in some ways he succeeded. More than 2,000 years after his death, his presence still dominates the imagination of millions. He is remembered not just as the man who unified China, but as the ruler whose tomb may never be opened. And maybe that is exactly what he wanted. Maybe Qin Shi Huang, the first emperor, truly achieved a kind of eternal rule. Not in life, not in death, but in mystery. For as long as his tomb remains sealed, the world will continue to wonder. And perhaps the most terrifying thing is not what lies inside, but the thought that some secrets were never meant to be uncovered.